right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Barbara Teicher, who is in Kansas City. How are you doing, Barb? I'm well, thank you, John. How are you? Absolutely. And, uh, and, and Barb has... Uh, has been bringing 25 plus years of experience developing leaders in Fortune 50 to 500 companies, specializing in strategic leadership and effective business communication. You've also have uh, been featured on, on many media, such so ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox. And what we're gonna talk about today is leadership development and communication. So um, Barb, let's, let's get straight into it. Leadership development, and communication. Why, you know, why does the and communication? Well, I think there's a lot of different components to leadership development. While communication is a strategic part of that, obviously, um, I think there are other things that go into it as well. So I leave communication separately because I think it's a priority, even though it's not the only thing. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I uh, 100% agree. And what do you think are the, the changing demands on leadership? Because I mean, I feel that even pre pandemic, people were wanting something a little bit different. Uh, the pandemic, I think has has uh, accentuated that. Uh, so what's your feeling and what is changing about leadership, and what people expect or want from leadership? That's interesting. Uh, part of this, John, I would go back to something that you said, and that is how to be your best self. And I think as the pandemic has come and as we struggle to find out what this new normal is, in my opinion, I think when it comes to leadership and what people are wanting is, is for other people to be real, to realize that I am probably working from home and I've got kids and I've got a family and I've got all these things playing on my time. And so please just, just be a person, right? Understand that just because I am not behind my computer 24 seven, doesn't mean I'm not dedicated, doesn't mean I don't wanna move up the ladder, but to have a little compassion. And, and rather than a leader trying to convince you of how good they are, now I think it's even more important that good leaders convince you of how good you are and, and do their jobs in um, making more of that human connection is the way I would say it. I think that right now is probably more important than it's been in the last however long, especially in a sales environment where people are doing things differently than they were before. Salespeople used to say, ah, oh, you know, I need to be one-on-one -on -one with someone, which of course is, is wonderful, but not always, uh, not always feasible right now. Yeah, no, there's some, some great points there. No, I totally agree. Uh, and I do think that it has, uh, you know, things have changed. I think they were changing pre-pandemic, but certainly, mm -hmm. you know, after the pandemic. And I do, I, I completely agree with you. I think people want open, transparent, uh, authentic communication. And that doesn't have to mean some people like promote this, you know, the idea of like everybody should be rah-rah and happy and stuff and all the time. But, <laughs> but I mean, good Good leadership and good authentic leadership uh, is still about, you know, still delivering tough messages, still demanding results. But as you say, making sure that expectations are set, that there's a human element in there. You know, John, when I grew, the era that I grew up in, uh, it was kind of like like men were tough and women were emotional. Right. <laughs> well, uh, in order like for me to fit in as a sales manager, I had to try to be like the guy, you know, I had to wear yeah. the navy blue suit and the heels and that, you know, be tough. Well, now being tough is not a good thing. As a matter of fact, in some certain cases, it's illegal. It's called bullying, right? <laughs> but I think that it's not being tough anymore. It's being strong. And strong may have a different connotation for different people, because to me, strong means are, are you strong enough to be your authentic self, right? There are times, to your point, I feel you're going to be rah, rah, and things are great. Yeah. Let's get motivated. And there are going to be times that as a leader, you have to go, you know what? This is hard. I mean, I know it's hard. I know people are struggling. And so to be strong means being strong enough to be your authentic self, too, you know, regardless of what the title of the person is that's in the room with you and, and that transparency that you mentioned before. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree with it. And I think, uh, and I think that's where the onus, I think, and coming back to your communication piece, I think that's where the onus is on, is on leaders to be, not just to be more communicative, um, but as you say, communicate authentically, but also realize that there's a whole new world out there and there's no one size fits all when it comes to communication. I think that's very true. Uh, you know, I'll do a, a, say, a shameless plug for my book, mm -hmm. but, uh, um, you know, I wrote the book called It's How You Say It. And I, I definitely think that as you communicate with your teams, different people warrant different styles of communication. Now, that's nothing new. You know, that's been around forever. But you also add to that then what you just said about there, there is a difference in the way we approach things now. There is a difference in the way leaders need to approach things now um, and just taking all of these different components in that when it comes to communication I think that um, that realness and that I, I hate to use the word vulnerability but I'll just call it realness right yeah. you know there are days as a leader I'm going to be in a great mood and you know what there are days as a leader that I'm going to be a little burnt out and stressed too and realizing that you don't have to always be yay sales yay I mean that's not realistic yeah, and I, and I think in some ways, for the first time in history, uh, you know, we have a shared experience. I mean, a truly shared global experience. It may not have been a very pleasant one, but it certainly was a shared one. If you think of other global events in the past, they haven't really been. Even world wars didn't include everybody. This has included the whole world. So it's kind of like you have a ready-made thing in common so if you have difficulty maybe reaching out or communicating with certain people now at least you have something in common right right i think uh, yeah i think that's really true too and i think it's it's gone through kind of these phases with the pandemic and that is yeah. at first nobody knew what to do or how to do it right and then you get into the why can't i do this better why am i not able to to do what i'm perceiving everyone else is doing and settling into now okay you know, I've kind of figured this out. I I know when to push and when not to. I, I know when to schedule, when not to, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I think before, because there was nothing to equate it to, no one had been through a pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And then to your point, especially on the global state, uh, scale, if you do deal with folks that are international, it is something that, that everyone can relate to, even though some people may not want to talk about it, right? It's sure. like, let's forget this ever happened. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. It still is that commonality and that bond that pulls us together still yeah and and the other thing that you mentioned earlier I just wanted to come back to is I mean I think now one of the biggest challenges for leadership is to develop new models of working because I think uh you know a lot of people were forced to go virtual and some people did that kicking and screaming both companies and employees some companies have discovered and people have discovered that it's more effective maybe they need to keep it maybe they'll have a hybrid organization going forward some virtual some not but I think to do this effectively, then you have to start working on new models. And so to point, as you, as you said earlier, perhaps if you work from home and you've got small children, you need to get them to school. Maybe you don't start your day at 7 a.m. Maybe you start your day at 9 and then you work or whatever. But I think you have to have those conversations. And I think companies have to be more flexible than they've ever been. I agree. And I think that we're starting to see a little more of that, John, with as far as the flexibility. And one thing that I would challenge folks that are listening to this is, even though we are talking about careers and work, make sure you're, you're dealing with yourself, too. We always tend to look out for other people, right? I need to take care of this person and that person or this project or that project. And I'm not saying we don't. But at the same time, I think also we need to do ourselves the favor that we are not scheduling back to back, that we're maybe we take the kids to, to work and then we walk for half an hour or mm -hmm. at 530 or whatever the time we put our computer down and put a notification that says, I'll be back in the morning. Right. Um, you mentioned models too. Uh, the model that I use, um, the, the words it deals with, just to make a long story short, are insight, influence and impact. And I think we both from a career standpoint and a personal standpoint need to take a step back and use our insight, which often isn't done, to say, what are the lessons I've learned? What are the behaviors that I need to stop doing? What are the behaviors I need to start doing? How can I be my best advocate, not only for myself, but also for my clients and my, my customers, so that I'm taking kind of a 360 and not what we tend to do, which is kind of like this tunnel vision.
Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I think that's such a critically important point, because we live in a culture that doesn't want you to spend any time with yourself, that doesn't want you to self reflect, that wants to bombard you, wants your attention all the time, your devices want your attention, the news wants your attention, everything right. wants your attention. Sure. Uh, and, and I think it's almost become counterculture actually to take a step back and you know exist in some self-reflection and silence but i think this is critical for for both leaders and employees for for everybody is to kind of take a step back and ask yourself are you operating in the most effective manner possible and if not then perhaps you need to have some conversations well it's it's one of those things that comes back to i'm going to call them boundaries Mm -hmm. um it's interesting i was working uh coaching with a, a sales executive not real long ago anyway the point is he said you know I go to I am in back to back meetings I go to meetings every hour and he said and I'm getting more to do's during the meetings and at the end of the day I've had eight meetings and no time to do anything and I said you know sometimes we have a tendency to look like this so I'm just going to open some food for thought and what I mentioned to him was I said take me through a Monday Right. And he said, well, Monday morning at eight o'clock, we have a sales meeting and, you know, the all the reps come in and we have a and I said, OK, what's the purpose? Well, just kind of touch base. And how did the week go? And right. You know where this is going. Don't you? Yeah. Uh, right. And I said, so if someone had a great deal on Wednesday, would they wait till next Monday or would they call you? And he goes, oh, no, they'd call me. And I said, OK, so if you change this to every other Monday on your sales thing, but as I said, it's how you say it. Right that you, you, you know, state this in such a way that it's, hey, I know we're all bombarded. What if we were to take these meetings every other week? No one's going to go, oh, no, I really want to spend more time. Mm -hmm. And so by by looking at our schedules, if you will, what are those meetings that you are actually a decision maker in? And what are those meetings that if someone were to give you the minutes to it or send you an email, you, you really wouldn't be out of the loop. And we need to learn those boundaries. And to your point, too, that we just talked about, push back on that because you've got to be your own best advocate. It, it's taking care of yourself so that you can take care of business. Yeah, no, and I think that's such an incredibly important point. I just want to underline is yes, you are, you, you need to be your own best advocate. You, you care more about your career and your job and all of that than anybody else in the world does. And that's why I would say is like, don't wait around to, for people to, to invest in you or train you or lift you up or mentor you it's great when that happens but don't wait around for that Mm -mm. and know what it is you need right where are you where do you want to go so let's say you want to go into sales management or management whatever if you're here and that's there and you always seem to be getting you know jumped over and they know it first of all have you have you spoken to your leadership and let them know you're interested in moving up and if it doesn't happen okay here's where i am here's where i want to be what do you see this skill gap as because as they say hope is not a strategy right mm-hmm. you need to get them to tell you in black and white behavioral terms what it is you need to do right on the other hand what we talked about as far as being your own best advocate no one is going to say to you, you know, put your computer down at four o'clock today, Barb, it's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, other than you go to your calendar and you block off at four o'clock and just you're busy, right? And sometimes we feel like we can't do that because culture has said you should all, to your point, you should always be on the screens, always up. Well, that's called burnout, you know? Yeah, no, no, that's absolutely, absolutely called burnout. And I think the other thing too is, I think sometimes, and this goes for everybody, we, everybody, we all need to take a little bit of accountability and ownership because yes, we say we're so busy, we're frantic, we've got so much going on back to back. But if you did one of those old fashioned time and motion studies, you know, with the clipboard, somebody standing behind you with a clipboard, how much would they find you being distracted by things that are not actually central to your work and maybe completely unrelated to your work? I bet you, if you were honest, you 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 would know that there's a lot of time in there that's been spent on just being distracted. And why do we value when someone says, oh, I'm so busy? Why do we see that as a good thing? Right. If someone were to say, well, you know, how you doing? Fine. Nothing's really going on. We, what? I mean, right. It almost looks as though you're being a slacker. Right. If nothing's going on. And, and yet, to your point, if you really do look at that, what percentage of that time is it because you're doing things maybe you should be pushing back on, right? Mm-hmm. I, I totally, I totally agree. 
Yeah, and maybe you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing because maybe if you added up all those little alerts that you get from your news sources and your sports and your all of that and you discover that, hmm, that actually takes up quite a lot of time um, yeah. in your day. That's funny you said that. I, I did a webinar this morning and one of the things I was talking about is it used to be that when the phone rang, you'd answer it. Well, phone never mm. rings anymore, right? Yeah. Now it's your text dings or your email dings and we feel like we have to run and, and answer that. But if you silence both of those and you put a responder, let's say, on your email and say, hey, you know, I will be checking emails at 10 this morning and two this afternoon or whatever. If this is, you know, time sensitive, please text, whatever the case may be, because we have to find ways that we are in control of our day, not our day in control of us. Right. Yeah. And, and all of these things, this stress and all these things lead to some of the the mild depression that people are starting to feel because they don't feel in control anymore and those are some of the reasons yeah i know and, and i think that's a i think that's a fantastic point i think we all have to maybe do some you know reprogramming of our of our pavlovian responses because yeah i think you're 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 completely correct and it's stress it does induce stress because if you see there's a text bouncing there and you're not at looking at it immediately it's stressful because and, and it distracts you from what you're supposed to be doing. And, and it's a weird thing that we have we have taught ourselves to be so I mean, I'm old enough to remember the pre uh, internet days. And it's kind of funny because you look at people now like the instantane, everything is instantaneous. And you just wonder, yeah. you know, why have we become so fixated on the instantaneous because it doesn't it's not always the best response anyway. And we make assumptions, for instance, when that ding goes off, we assume it's something more important than what yeah. we're doing right now, right? Exactly. And, and we go over and lose that. Well, what happens when you do that? You lose your train of thought when you come back to what you were doing, you have to re-engage and all those things that we've been talking about. And it's, it's the old adage to me that if you keep letting them do it, they'll keep doing it, right? So some of this, I think we have brought on ourselves because if you said you remember the beginning of the internet, you probably also remember that, oh my gosh, it was supposed to revolutionize things and make, make work much faster because we had a computer. Well, what it really did is now you don't stop work at five. Now they expect you to bring it home with you, right? So yeah. all of those, all of those reprogramming and advocating for ourselves again, uh, as far as what is acceptable and what is not acceptable when it comes to uh, the work-life balance. Yeah, and, and I think there, and I and absolutely, and I think there's where there's a real uh, leadership challenge is to be in tune with the people around you, but also to be looking for those signs of distraction, those signs of burnout, those signs of overwhelm, those signs of maybe people who need you to actually reach out or somebody to reach out to and say, let us help you, you know, format a better scenario for yourself right now, a better working schedule or whatever it is. Right. And you know, what's important as a leader also, and I'll liken it to being a coach, right? You need to know the difference on your teams of those people that need a pat on the back and those people that need a kick in the tail. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's different for different people. So I don't want folks to think that we are confusing the issue and saying that you should be soft or you should be weak with people. I think what you're saying is that you should expect a certain amount, but, but realistically, right? And to realize, like you just said, those signs, when do we need to back off and when, how do we know when to ask the questions, hey, how's it going? And listen to really what they're saying. So as a leader, I think there are so many more plates spinning now than there ever have been before, if you're going to be an effective leader. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I don't think, you know, and yeah, absolutely. It's not advocating be, being soft or being all come by or anything like that. It's actually it's quite the opposite, quite <laughs> right. the opposite in many ways. I mean, you know, people are there to, they have a job, but there's a result that's expected. You're paying them for that. So exactly. um, therefore it's in your interest to, to help them be in the best situation to deliver. Right. And making it okay that they realize they can come to you, especially now someone was talking, it's like, okay, well, I don't see them in the office anymore. And I, I really, I hate to, to text them because I don't know what they're in the middle of. So make it easy for your folks. Hey, Mondays, I'm in meetings most any day. I mean, most all day, but if you need to catch me in the afternoon, or if you really need me, just text me. I mean, let them know 
the best way to to communicate with you. They don't know. And a lot of times they're concerned because after all, you're the boss, right? So they're a lot of times hesitant to um, to kind of intrude as the way they would see it. So in yeah. this hybrid society. But I mean, but most uh, most companies now are up on Slack or Teams or something like that anyway. So I mean, you have right. you probably have the mechanism right in front of you. Just You just need to use it. And yeah, and it's better to have a proactive conversation than it is to have a reactive one later coming the other way. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, so the, the whole communication, empathy, you know, direction, support, you know, correcting. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's not just the positive and it's not just the constructive. It is that blend of the two that makes a good leader. And can you show them, you know, the vision? Do you have that mm -hmm. corporate vision? And not only that, but how do their sales or whatever they do, how does their piece of this pie impact and help propel the company forward? If people don't know how they're contributing or what difference they're really making. It's a lot harder to get excited about it because you don't, you don't think you're making a difference. Yeah, listen, I think that's a fantastic point to end on because I, I think that's so critical is that everybody in the company, no matter where they are, what job they do, should be able to see a connection between what they do and the the goals of the company, the vision, the mission, whatever it is of the company. If they can't see that, that is one of the things that you should empower your employees to say to their manager, I don't, I'm doing this. Can you just show me how this is helping the company? Yes. If, it's not, if you can't see it, um, mm -hmm. then either somebody needs to point it out to you or somebody needs to go, yes, actually, you're correct. We don't need to be doing this. Right. I mean, and leaders need to know that. I mean, they're the mm -hmm. ones that should be, you know, sharing this up front. Right. And if they yeah. don't know it, then there's an issue with the leader. Right. No, absolutely. hundred percent. Well, listen, this has been fantastic, Barb. Thank you so much for your time this morning. My All pleasure. of Barb's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Um, well, thank you. My brand is called Propel Her. Uh, I have a specialty and a focus to help accelerate women to be more influential leaders with a greater impact, but my leadership that I do transcends, so I support both. Uh, I am a global leadership development and communication speaker, um, published author, and very fortunate to be endorsed by uh, the Washington Post, which is great, and also um, an international TEDx speaker, so I've spoken several times uh, on the TEDx platform. Um, you said my contact information is going to be on yep. your screen, so I won't uh, won't belabor that. But um, if people want to find out more about me, they can always go to my website, propelherinfluence.com. And um, I appreciate you having me on today. It was great. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Barb. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all again soon. Thank you.